guys! Welcome back to another week of Occupational Therapy. This week, we're going to have you focus on your bilateral coordination skills. This is using two hands together. Some things that you may need are scissors, Play-Doh or putty, markers or a highlighter, construction paper or strips of paper, straws, Hi tissue Ms. M. I'm going to be teaching you about safety with scissors and also about the environment setup. First of all, a child should be supervised at all times when using scissors, and it's preferable to use a child size scissors instead of an adult scissors. Something else to consider when setting up the environment is to have a table to put the items on and the option to have your child either sit or stand. Just make sure that your child's feet are able to touch the ground, and if they can't, you can provide either a stool or box so that their feet are supported. Now for an environment setup, you'll need a scissors, and then you'll need some cutting items. You can use Play-Doh, straws, computer paper, construction paper, to name a few items. When you prepare to cut on a line, you're gonna make sure that both of your thumbs are pointing up. You're gonna start at the bottom of the line closest to your body, and you're gonna cut up and away from your body. Let's talk about making it easier. Maybe you found that cutting on a line is just a little too difficult for your student. That's okay. You can have them simply cut on a strip, or you can have them cut on a strip that has no lines. You can have them try to tear a strip, and if tearing is too hard, then you can pre-tear some pieces and get it started for them. When they tear, they need to use a pincher grasp at the top of the paper. One goes down and one stays Some put. Some more fun ways to make cutting easier is to use things other than paper to cut. You can make Play-Doh snakes and have your child snip them. You can also try snipping plastic straws. This is also a good warm-up activity for cutting. You can also put stickers on the line to give your student a helpful target to cut through. This can also be very motivating. Here are some ways you can make cutting a little bit more challenging. Instead of using construction paper or cardstock, you can use printer paper. It's a little floppier. You can also use a thinner line instead of a thick line. You can also try to progress to basic shapes by starting with a curved line. And if they master that, they can move on to a circle. If you wanna try shapes with angles, start with an angled line and then progress to a square. Hi, it's Miss Lindsay. There are a bunch of ways to work when using both of your hands together, using things that you can find around your house. I'm going to show you a few of those ways. There are a bunch of other ways listed on your handout on your OT Google Classroom. Stringing activities are a great way to work on using both of your hands together. To make a collage, you can use a lot of things like magazines. I couldn't find a lot of magazines at my house, but I was able to find some stickers, some mail, some old cards, and some recycling. My collage is of my favorite things. I love my family and friends. I love music. I love games. I love ice cream and dogs. I also love the beach and smiling. A great way to get your body ready for cutting or any bilateral activities is doing some animal walks. It's some silly exercises that you might look like an animal while doing. These exercises should help in motor planning, motor coordination, as well as fine motor and core strength. A great way to practice animal walks is through a hallway. And if you don't have that, you can use a blanket or a towel. That way the child knows where to stay when they're practicing. Walks are usually practiced by going forwards or backwards. 
If this is too hard, you can just have your child move forward. Another way to structure the activity is having a start and an end place. This way that the kids aren't moving all across the room and they're moving in a straight line. So your start could be a chair and your end could be the TV or even a different room. I'm gonna show you guys some animal walk activities that you guys can do while you're at home. This is the frog jump. You're gonna squat down like a frog and then you're gonna jump in the air. That's one, two, three. It's a bear walk. You're gonna get down on your hands, you wanna make sure, and you're gonna walk a quap across the room called the crab walk. You wanna get down on your hands behind your back and you're gonna walk like a crab. But you wanna make sure that you don't bump into anything and you walk across the room.